Hello everyone, this is Professor Martinez, and in this video, I will be providing you a brief overview of how to navigate the course Canvas shell and how to complete the lecture and laboratory activities. Starting first with the main module that you'll first see when you open this course, we have our course homepage and which contains all of the course information, as well as quick access links for the syllabus, modules, and Zoom. Additionally, we have in the course orientation, a brief summary of the course and aspects of the course grading scheme, course policies, and other support services. We also have the required materials noting that the OpenStax textbook is free and open source available online via the OpenStax link. Uh, this is an OER textbook, open educational resource, and you can access the book through that link or from the OpenStax site. The lab manual is the Timberlake lab manual. As mentioned in a previous announcement, there is a copy of this book available in the library reserves, and I provided that as a link via Canvas. It's a physical hard copy in the Mount San Jacinto College library, and the exact location is found by searching the reserves. Uh, and I can show you that now. So if we go to the announcement, I mentioned that the lab manual is on reserves. So if you open the library reserves link, it mentions that this Timberlake lab manual is available at the San Jacinto campus library. And you can check that. And it notes that there is one copy and the item is in place. So if you're waiting for your lab manual to arrive, this is a resource that you can use in the meantime. Continuing on, all homework is assigned and graded through Canvas. You don't have to pay for an online homework service. All the homework for this class is found in Canvas. Okay, so let's go back to the main modules. And let's just talk a little bit about the week one to-do list. I provided you a graphical to-do list with all of the sections highlighted. So we have to complete the orientation, complete the check-in, which many of you have done by this point. Uh, for unit one, this is the first major chapter that we're covering. It has the chapter one lecture and two laboratories associated with it. So to complete unit one, we're gonna download the notes and watch the lecture recordings. I will show you where to find those in Canvas. Uh, they're also shown pictorially in these graphics. You'll also complete the unit one homework and quiz, and these are found embedded in Canvas. For the laboratories, we're gonna have to tackle wet lab one and lab two, which are found in your lab manual. So I have an excerpt page from the lab manual and we'll delve into that momentarily. After reading the lab manual, you're then going to view the lab one page and the lab one recording. The recording contains a pre-lab lecture that walks you through some of the major themes for each laboratory. And in many cases, I will actively solve a, a fair number, if not the majority of the calculations you'll have to do in that laboratory in this pre-lab lecture video. So it's really important to watch it. Additionally, you're gonna wanna view the lab page itself as it has detailed instructions for what data you're gonna collect and how you're gonna fill in your lab manual pages. Finally, you'll submit your report pages at the following links. So how do we do this in practice? Well, let's take a look. So we have our chapter one notes and workbook. These are complementary tools. The notes you're going to download and you're gonna use these notes when you watch the lecture. So if we go to the lecture recordings, you'll notice that if you pull up the lecture recordings, the pages in the notes directly map onto the lecture recording. So as I fill in the lecture notes, you will in turn add your own annotations as well. I have all the lectures for chapter one embedded in this page and you'll go through them 
page by page. Okay, so that's the lecture. So you download the lecture notes, you watch the lectures, you fill in the lecture notes and practice the examples as I tackle them in the lecture videos. Now, in terms of the workbook, the workbook has a ton of practice problems. Now, you're not required to do every single workbook problem, but practicing with the workbook will be invaluable when you work on the homework. The homework draws many of its questions from the workbook. And we mentioned many of these workbook problems in our lectures. So I really recommend attempting as many problems as you can from this workbook, as you'll find that if you have a complete worked out problem for a workbook problem, you may see those problems again. If not on the homework, you may see them on the quiz or the eventual exam. So the workbook is a ton of practice that you can use to reinforce your knowledge of the course concepts. Now, moving on from there. In terms of the lecture content, in terms of assignments we have to submit, we have the homework, the practice quiz, and the quiz. All of these are multiple choice and fill in the blank questions via Canvas. This is available for multiple attempts. So you can start them and then reattempt them. I would recommend writing down your responses for each of these questions in a notebook or a separate sheet of paper. So that way, when you come back to the homework, if you need to take a break, you can fill in your responses and you don't have to spend time working on the same question over and over. So here's what the homework looks like. And as you notice, many of these questions are suspiciously very, very similar to the workbook questions. And that's really important. So. I find working through the workbook will set you up well to complete the homework assignments. Additionally, I recommend watching the lecture videos because many of the questions that are found in the homework also show up in the lecture videos. So we'll complete this and then submit. Now, once you've done the homework and you feel pretty confident with your knowledge of the course material, you're gonna open up the quiz. The quiz shown here, is a single attempt exercise. So you wanna be sure that you're ready to go. It's untimed, um, but you will wanna make sure that you have fully mastered the homework questions. You fully understand the questions covered in the lectures, and then you can open up the quiz and attempt the quiz. It's a single attempt, but it's untimed. So you can take as much time as you need to work through the problems and reach a reasonable response. Um, Again, if there are any questions regarding navigating the lecture content, don't hesitate to reach out. We're now gonna talk a little bit about the laboratory. So I'm gonna close a few of these tabs that we've opened up and we're gonna talk a little bit about the laboratory at this time. So let's take a moment here and let's begin by looking at the first lab page, experiment one, chemistry and measurement. So here is the lab page. And in this case, our first required reading is that we need to read the introduction and procedure page for experiment one, chemistry and measurement in your lab manual. So I'm going to pull up the lab manual. I have the, the ebook version just to make it easier, but you can also use the hard copy as long as you have access to some version of the lab manual that's more than acceptable. So I'm gonna to go to experiment one, chemistry and measurement, and I'm gonna pull up that page. So here's experiment one, chemistry and measurement. And we're gonna be filling in the report sheets using the data provided on Canvas. So this lab has a brief introduction in your lab manual. You can read through this introduction in your lab manual. I've also provided you an introduction in Canvas and I include a little bit more practical examples in Canvas to help you along with the lab. Now we're gonna to get to the procedure part. So once you finish through the introduction, we read the full introduction. We're then gonna to get to the experimental procedure and each part in your lab, so part A in the lab, has a part that is mentioned and noted in the lab page. So for example, we'll read part A, and if you have a centimeter ruler available, you can complete the required measurements using your lab manual. So if I have a centimeter ruler in terms of measuring length, 
then I can complete these parts for part A. So in this case, we'll observe the marked lines, identify the smallest lines on our ruler. We're gonna make some length measurements. We're gonna indicate the estimated digit and the number of significant digits, and we'll measure the length of the line drawn. Now, that is a little bit difficult to necessarily map, but this is gonna make a lot of sense once you actually see the part A. So when you look at your data sheet for part A, it's gonna ask you a few questions. So what units are represented by the numbers on your meter stick? What do the small lines marked represent? And then you're gonna complete the following statements. So you're gonna fill in this report sheet. You're then gonna take some length measurements. If you have a ruler available, then you can take all of these length measurements using your ruler. You're also gonna be able to compare with your classmates the length of the line. That's why we have a discussion form available for you to discuss some of these lab results that require you to compare with your classmates. You'll also answer this question. Now, if you don't have a ruler available, this is when you'll notice there's an alternative procedure. If you don't have a centimeter ruler, please follow the alternative procedure. So you'll take the measurements from the provided videos. So in this case, we have some image files. So if we click on the vertical length of the paper, we have a ruler shown and we'll measure the length and width of the piece of paper using the provided image with the piece of paper and the ruler. So for example, we'd write this as 28.00 centimeters. So if I were filling in my own personal, personal lab manual, if I was using the alternative procedure for the vertical length of paper, I would just fill it in as 28.00 centimeters. You'd repeat this process for the other remaining images. So for line one, if we have to take a length measurement, then we'd repeat this process and take the length measurement. I would encourage you to review the pre-lab lecture as well as I show a tutorial on how to complete many of the calculations for this lab. Okay, so once we finish part A, we then have some questions. So we're gonna have to fill in question one. So that's here in your lab manual. So we'll just answer this question. Next, we move to part B. So measuring volume. So in this case, we're asked to record the volume of a liquid. So in this case, I have provided you three graduated cylinders that you'll perform your volume measurements for. So we have these three graduated cylinders. So looking at graduated cylinder A, we take this volume reading. So that looks like 53.0 milliliters. And in this case, we just fill in our lab manual. So A, B, and C, we write 53.0 milliliters for the volume reading for graduated cylinder A. And we repeat this process for all three. Okay, so we then have a volume of solid calculation. So we have a before and after image that we're gonna analyze and we're gonna record the volume in the graduated cylinder before and after addition, and then calculate the volume of solid via different, the difference. So I'm gonna open these two images. And in this case, we can zoom in substantially. Okay, perfect. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the volume reading. Again, we read from the bottom of the meniscus. And in this case, 92, four, six, eight. This looks about 98.2 milliliters. So once I've taken this reading, what I can do is I can go to my lab manual and it's the volume of water, submerged solid, we have 98.2 mils. 
we'll record the initial volume of water and then subtract that. Okay, so as you can see, the lab has all of the videos and images that you're gonna take your measurements from. For part C, we're measuring mass. So in this case, we're gonna follow this alternative procedure for part C. So rather than filling out this table, we are gonna fill out the table that I provided where we have the mass of an empty beaker and the mass of beaker plus water. And you'll just record these mass values in your table. So rather than in your report, having this whole table filled in, you will just include this table with your data filled in and you'll attach that to the back of your report. Okay. Then you'll answer a few questions. So we have to answer questions two and three, and we'll include our responses attached to our lab sheets. So you turn everything in. Once you have all your lab pages filled in or you've written out each of the questions and each of the data tables and you filled those in, you'll then upload them to the unit one report submission tab. And ideally, if you can have everything submitted as a single PDF file, that would be perfect, or everything just submitted in a single Word document, that would be great. Just make sure all the pages are in order and that all the pages and annotations are clearly readable so I can provide you points for this activity. And of course, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm always happy to assist. Finally, uh, one thing I do want to showcase, we have some lab recordings as well. So lab one, chemistry and measurements. I prepared a full pre-lab lecture video. And I talk a little bit about some of the calculations, conversions and other activities that you'll have to do as part of completing this laboratory. This serves as the pre-lab lecture for the lab and talks about many of the calculations and practices that you will have to do as part of this, this laboratory. I would especially recommend paying attention to the portion of this lecture covering measurements and significant figures. To expand on this idea, if we look, for example, at the lab two pre-lab lecture, which follows the same general theme, in this case, I even go through and walk you through the major parts of each laboratory. And I showcase some navigation as well. So if you're ever stuck on the labs, don't hesitate to review the pre-lab lecture videos as I talk a lot about the theory and I showcase how to run through each of the laboratories. Again, you can use either a digital or hard copy for your lab manual and you'll follow the instructions found in each lab page on Canvas. So each lab page has the lab name. You'd open that page and open that lab in your lab manual, and you'll follow the procedure step by step. So I hope this was helpful. If there are any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out. And again, uh, don't hesitate to share your questions via email, office hours, or Canvas messaging, and I'd be happy to get back to you.